Hi guys, it's Ronnie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a cozy fall, autumn, Halloween crochet ideas video. As soon as it turns September 1st, I swear to God, the internet decides that it is Halloween, which is great. I love fall. I love this season. Even though it's still like 80 degrees outside, I am preparing myself for some fall weather. It was actually just really nice outside today, so. More or less, I'm going to be crocheting, working on a crochet project, which it's gonna be a sweater for myself. I've got a chai latte by my side. It's kind of watered down, but that's okay. And I've got a list of 30 different crochet ideas. But before I get started, you can also check in the description down below on my Pinterest. I have a board, I think labeled fall crochet ideas. And so you can look at all the different things that I've sort of looked at for inspiration for this video as well as there should be a lot of different free patterns and variations of some of the things that I'm gonna talk about today. So if you're interested, definitely check out my Pinterest. Definitely follow me on Pinterest because I, I like to pin stuff. I love making Pinterest boards, so. Starting off with number one, we have a granny square tote. I feel like granny square totes are like a staple both of the crochet community, but also of just fall. I feel like you can incorporate a lot of different colors and depending on your skill level you can find pretty beginner uh, granny square tutorials. I also have a pretty beginner friendly granny square tutorial on my channel which I'll link down below. Number two is one that I actually really need to do because I have this really cute candle and I love to burn this candle, but I feel like it doesn't really go with like my aesthetic. Like my room is very much like pink. So I would like to make like a little candle thing. I don't know what it's called. I wouldn't call it a candle cover because it's not going over, but it's just like a little candle thing. <laughs> Either way, the second one is like a little holder for your candle. Again, this is something that you could use for a lot of different things. I am struggling today. I, like, I'm gonna cut out all of the nonsense that's happening, but like, I'm struggling to talk. <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I think a candle holder would be great for a beginner because it utilizes some pretty basic techniques, I think, and because like, you could literally just pop it on like any candle that's like the same size. I know a lot of people buy like, I think this one, yeah, this is like the mainstays one. So like, it's literally from Walmart. So like, if you burn through the candle, you can just pop it on a different one. On to number three, the next one is one that every time around this year, for the past like year or two, I have seen this creator like push how they created this cute little uh, drink koozie or sort of like drink holder type thing and I think it's really cute and I think it's actually a really good idea for like days like today where my drink is just melting I need something over it I have like a cup holder this is my little cup holder um, or I guess coaster but it would be really great to have especially like in cooler weather Either way, the third item is a drink holder or a drink koozie, depending on like what kind of drink you have. And again, it's very similar to the candle holder, although you can do one with a bottom or one without a bottom, but I, I definitely think that it would be great for the fall season. Number four is something that I feel like is a canon event for every beginner crocheter, which is a beanie. There's probably like a thousand tutorials out there for the basic beanie, especially for fall because that's when we start wearing hats. And so of course you wanna crochet yourself a little beanie to wear so that when people say, oh, where did you get that? You can be like, I made it. And of course I do have a tutorial for that. So I will leave the link down below. I specifically have one that's shaped like a pumpkin. So like if you're into like hats that are shaped like things, like definitely check out that tutorial. Number five is another one that I have a tutorial for and I just feel like it's it's so fall coded, okay? Leg warmers. 
I think leg warmers are so cute and like you can make a really basic pair like the one that I have a tutorial for on my channel but there's also again like a hundred other tutorials out there for different kinds of leg warmers and different techniques that you can use to sort of like spice it up. In the opposite direction we have arm warmers. I love arm warmers because they can go anywhere from like being super grungy to like super feminine and I just I love that. And again, this is that weird period of time, specifically like if you're like me and you live in the Midwest, but this is that period of time where you specifically like don't know how many layers to put on and you can't really put on a coat, you know, when it gets to be fall time because it's that's too hot. But you also can't just walk around with like a t-shirt on once it starts to get pretty cool outside. So like you have to like try to figure out like how you're gonna keep warm but not be too warm and I feel like arm warmers are like definitely up there with like something that you could make for the fall that would totally work with like short sleeves and some arm warmers. The next one reminds me sort of of my childhood because we used to do this all the time like in our art classes or like I don't know like there I feel like I I know I've made at least one of these when I was a kid but essentially just like a pumpkin decoration has no other purpose than to just be a pumpkin. And I'm sure there are like a hundred tutorials out there for how to make your own little pumpkin decorations to, you know, set on shelves or for like the middle of a table, whatever. But I just remember making pumpkin decorations all the time when I was a kid. Eight and nine kind of go with each other because why wouldn't they? But number eight, of course, is a cat collar or like a dog collar, depending on like your pet. But again, there are so many tutorials. I actually have a tutorial for a cat collar. It's more like spring-ish, but you could probably do the same cat collar, like you could use that same tutorial or that same base, and just instead of doing sort of like a tulip stitch, you could do a pumpkin stitch, which I am not sure if I pinned a tutorial for that, but if I remember to, I will try to make sure to link a tutorial for a pumpkin stitch but if you have cats that are very patient then you might be able to make them a cute little like Halloween collar or a pumpkin collar or just something that like has the colors of fall in it something of that sort and of course similarly with number nine you can make a little hat for your cat I think a pumpkin hat would be super cute like I think there are a bajillion tutorials out there for hats for your cat and again you could just make it to match whatever you want your cat to be so if you want them to be a little pumpkin then like they could be a little pumpkin. <laughs> Number 10 is one that I specifically saw a pattern for which is a granny square pumpkin tote. Instead of adding like a specific flare to just one granny square, you do a whole bunch of orange granny squares and you put them together and then you make a pumpkin. This would be great if you wanted to make little bags for like if you have children or something or if you have like like me, like a niece or a nephew that is going to go trick or treating, then they can have that for years and years to come that they can always use that bag to go trick or treating with. Idea number 11 is a striped scarf and again you could literally just change up the color scheme and boom you have a winter scarf boom you have a Easter scarf more or less there's so many different like color combinations and like stripe sizes that you could do and like widths that you could do for a scarf that like you could really just make it your own and give like your own personality to the scarf Number 12 is a headband or like an earmuff, although number 13 is related which is like actual earmuffs, so like I say like a headband, there's a specific headband that is super beginner friendly that I always like would recommend be like one of the first sort of projects that you make, which is the one that like sort of like does that on itself at the front, like it overlaps in the front. I think that's a really cute project and I don't know I feel like it's one where you kind of mess it up the first time and you're like why doesn't this fit right why doesn't it look right and then like the better you get you know the better it looks. 
But again, number 13 is like earmuffs. So I do have a tutorial for like the froggy earmuffs. And so you can kind of like, you know, again, add like bare ears instead, change up the color, etc. But like one that sort of goes around your ears and then you have to like tie rather than just being a, a headband that goes all the way around. Number 14 is something that I saw that was like super cute and I was like, oh my gosh, if I went to somebody's house or a party, this would be so cute to see. And it is these like little cauldron coasters, especially one that I saw that it was a cauldron that you fill with the coasters. And then when you, you know, pull them out, they're just like these cool little like round splats. Number 15 is one that's more related to Halloween like the last one, which is an eyeball purse or an eyeball bag. Again, I think this one could be pretty beginner friendly in the sense that really all you'd have to do is make two giant circles in white and then just make, you know, smaller things that you can attach to the outside of it because it can look really daunting at first to be like, oh my gosh, like an entire eyeball. Like, I don't think I could do that as a beginner. But if you take it slow and you sort of pull apart the different pieces that you see, you'll sort of see how each of the pieces individually is actually like very beginner friendly. And then when you put them together, they look a little more complicated than they actually are. Number 16 is one that is more like fall, autumn related, and I think it would actually be a really good gift for someone who has like a birthday in fall or someone who likes to bake, which is pie pot holders. I will say as like a little warning asterisk with anything related to like pot holders, do not use something like acrylic yarn or a yarn that could potentially melt. These are pot holders, they're supposed to like endure a lot of heat and something that is plasticky like acrylic is going to melt and that is dangerous so when you do make pot holders be careful and really look at the yarn that you're using you want to get the right material so that you don't hurt anybody and nobody gets hurt and nobody gets burned Number 17 is one that I think again is beginner friendly and can be really fun and you can also just continue to use it for years and years down the line, which is a garland. You can literally like put anything on a string. <laughs> you, can, you can literally crochet anything on a string and put it up and be like, boom, I'm a crochet artist. But yeah, garlands are super versatile. I feel like a lot of people make garlands. I'm pretty sure I pinned a bunch of different garlands, whether it be like pumpkins or ghosts or bats. It can really be anything. Again, you can do it for different occasions. So, you know, when it comes to be winter time, you can do snowflakes. When it gets to be like Easter time, you can do like little bunnies. And you know, in the summer, you can do like, like seashells and starfish or something like that. Like there's so many different things you can do with just like one base idea. Number 18 is one that I actually have a couple tutorials for on my channel, which is a bucket hat. Again, if it's sort of early in the autumn season, like it is right now where it's still 80 degrees outside, then you might not want to immediately go to like a beanie yet. So a bucket hat is a great way to keep your head like sort of cool, but also like still have an accessory on your head. Speaking of granny squares, I see this a lot around the fall time because generally when we think of this particular like piece of clothing, we think of sort of like the 70s and like the 60s, 70s sort of era because they have a lot of the autumn colors like brown and oranges and sort of these rusty colors. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know the granny square vest. Again, around autumn, I start to see these popping up all the time, people making these beautiful granny square vests. Again, there's so many different tutorials out there for it, and there's so many different granny square patterns out there that you can really do so many different things with that. We are two thirds of the way through with number 20, which is a pumpkin basket. So I actually saw a pattern for one that has like a pumpkin pattern on 
the actual basket and then of course I've seen other ones that are literally just like an orange basket that like kind of looks like a pumpkin. I feel like that's like to each their own. Number 21 is another cute like hair accessory that I think is great for, again, it's still too warm for a beanie, but like also I want to wear something on my head, which is like a little bandana. And again, I think because the shape of the bandana is so simple, a lot of people like to incorporate different stitches and different patterns into it so that it has some more interest, but you can always just make like a simple sort of triangle. Number 22 is leaf earrings. But again, these would be great for years and years to come. You could continue to wear leaf earrings because like, fall is pretty much going to come around every single year and you can wear them for you know a lot of different occasions and I just say this because like if they're Halloween ones like let's say they have ghosts or something like that like you can really only wear those around Halloween. <laughs> Number 23 is another granny square thing and this one is more related to fall than it is to Halloween which is a sunflower granny square tote. Again, you can really make anything with the granny squares, so like you could make a top with them, you could make a blanket with them, but I think that the sunflower tote is really pretty. I just love how like the color sort of just like expands outwards, so I'll see if I can find patterns for uh, sunflower granny squares. Number 24 is now... <laughs> I'm now realizing that I was like really like bent on trying to get granny squares into you guys' brains this fall because the next one is a granny square bucket hat, which again, I do have a tutorial for that. All you have to do is switch up the color scheme and boom, you have a bucket hat. Number 25 is a mushroom pouch. I think little pouches are fun in general because you can like literally make like anything with them but I think mushrooms are sort of like a cute little like nod to fall even though to me I feel like mushrooms give more of like a woodsy fairy feel and that's not necessarily fall to me but I I know that that aesthetic tends to come up around this time of year because of the color scheme so um, honestly anything like with mushrooms on it is pretty cute in my opinion. Number 26 is another set of earrings, but sunflower earrings, again, I feel like sunflowers are like really pretty and they're just really indicative of like the autumn vibes. Number 27 is one that I feel like is more like specific to the person, so like it's not something necessarily that like I personally have anything to go with it, but like if, if you do, like good for you, like because I don't, I don't, I have no idea how I would wear this. More or less a crochet collar, like the kind that you like put around. I always think that those like little Peter Pan collars and stuff are super cute, but again, I personally don't know if I have anything that would like pair very well with that. <laughs> Number 28, I think, is one that I saw on Pinterest that I was like, oh, this would be great. It's another one that's sort of like related to when I said earlier, which is like Halloween pouches. So making different Halloween like characters, like a vampire or mummy or a ghost or something like that and putting it on a bag. And again, if you have like, you know, multiple children in your life or like you and your friends want to learn to crochet then I definitely think that that would be like a fun project to make little pouches that you could go trick-or-treating with every year for you know however long. Number 29 is one that I saw that was super cute and it's another decoration which is a skull succulent. I love when people crochet little plants especially when they use like yarn that kind of looks like that actual plant but again I think this would be great to sort of like put you know in your bathroom or your kitchen or something like that where you know you don't have to like water it or worry about it dying and I know that succulents are like really hard to kill but trust me I've killed a succulent before I know depression's crazy and the final one, number 30, which is one that I think that everyone should try at least once in their crochet career, which is a fall sweater. 
I personally love making sweaters, as I'm doing right now. But again, there's like so many tutorials out there for different sweaters and like different designs and stuff. And you can always like make it your own with like different color schemes and stuff. But I personally love sweaters. I know they take a long time. And so like as a beginner, that can be really daunting. But for one, I think it's a canon event to like do a sweater and to just like mess it up so poorly. But two, I think it's just like a really great way to like determine like what kind of crocheter you want to be. I'm okay with like how time consuming making a sweater can be and also like putting it on and being like man this didn't work out like this doesn't look right even though I spent so long on it like I'm okay with frogging it but some people are not. Some people do not like that so you know, but I think we all have to try it like at least once to discover if we like it. Same with like Amigurumi, like making little plushies. Like I've made a couple of them in the past and I'm like, I don't like this, but I did it. I did it. Anyway, I hope this video was like helpful in getting sort of like your ideas flowing if you are sort of stuck in a crochet rut or if you are just trying to prepare for like the fall season or if you're just getting into crochet and you're like, I want to crochet something for the fall season and like I don't even know what I'm doing so like what should I choose? Hopefully this video covered all of you guys, but if you still are like, oh my gosh, like I, I have no idea what to make or I need to see more, of course go down to the description. I will have my Pinterest and that Pinterest board linked down below so that you can find it and you can look at all the ideas and so that you can see like sort of where my brain is at. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Definitely don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know down below, number one, if you want me to make a tutorial for any of these things or any of these items that I haven't already. And number two, let me know what you're gonna be for Halloween this year. Like, I know it's pretty early, but we're all gonna be Barbie, right? Like, anyway, I'll see you guys in my next one. What do you think? She's just pop.